Malacca. And that's where we're going to be spending a few days painting and checking out the local cuisine. shops here in Malacca but here it is my bowl after the sketch gonna try it okay the coconut in here is really subtle not to mention fresh Okay, I'm famished. I haven't had my breakfast ever since that paint out that I did this morning. So uh, this is uh, nasi lemak rendang ayam. So what it is, it's uh, coconut rice uh, with the uh, typical uh, ikan bilis, cucumber, hard boiled egg, and uh, rendang ayam or chicken in there. Yeah. I'm so hungry. See, nothing beats home cooked food. This is the blue pea. It is a major ingredient in many nyonya or peranakan kuekues. It is what creates the blue color of most of the nyonya kuekues. Yeah. It's a Thursday. It's getting more crowded. Uh, Malacca is kind of like a ghost town during the weekdays, but the weekends from Thursday afternoon onwards, the crowd kind of picks up. It's so warm and humid today. I'm so glad that this is a video because you can't smell how bad I smell right now. <laughs> so coming right up, here is this building that reminds me of Jiaofen in Taipei. It's that building that tea house that inspired the Studio Ghibli people when they were making uh, the movie Spirited Away. There you go. So if you are interested in watching that video of Zhou Fen, remember to check it out right here. Let's go in for some durian chendol. Uh, everyone says that it's the best in this area. I'm inside Shan Shu Gong right now. Um, it's always crowded, so I think they are able to make that volume every day. Uh, the durian is fresh, it's the real deal. Um, and it's served in a little uh, 
<laughs> no container. So presentation wise it looks a bit tacky but hey, in here it's amazing. Uh, I recommend this place. Uh, it may get a little bit crowded on weekends especially so come on weekdays if you want. Hi, we're still in Malacca, right here on Jalan Kampong Kuli, and we're heading towards Long An Restaurant. That's a super old school kopitiam or coffee shop. You know, it's so old school that the demi tasse or half cup coffee cup is still soaked in boiling hot water before they serve it to you. Uh, this keeps the half cup warm or hot actually yeah um, you don't have that anymore in Singapore here they have the traditional kaya and toast and uh, I'm gonna have tea today it feels like a tea today so I'm gonna have some milk tea desi kosong That was some pampering, traditional, authentic Thai massage here at Sense and Senses. They have two branches, one at Jalan Merdeka, and this is Taman Kota. Anyway, now over to Donald and Lily's Peranakan food. Finally, I'm um, gonna do some sketching and eating here. It's 3.45 in the afternoon. It's off peak, not so crowded. Looking forward to this. How it is, is you pick up all the food that you want and they're on sticks and then you put it in here and at the end of it, uh, they'll count uh, the sticks and then they'll charge you by per stick. This is a pot filled with sake, so it, yeah, your food promises to be really, really yummy. So this is where I'll tell you that if you enjoyed watching this, please give it a like or subscribe. Thank you so much for watching my videos. And of course, until the next one, which will be really soon, ciao ciao. Okay, so I'm at Molten Chocolate Cafe right now. And what caught my eye, or what brought me in here, is the fact that they sell Turkish coffee. I've not tried that before, so I'm finally going to try it and sketch it. Thank you. Turkish coffee is a method of preparing unfiltered coffee. It is made by boiling the ground coffee beans and is not made, for example, by filtering or percolation. The method of preparation has two characteristic features. Number one, that sugar has to be added to the coffee at the point of boiling and not after. Secondly, the boiling is done as slowly as possible. Okay, I'm done with the sketch. <laughs> now to try the coffee. Turkish coffee. Bottoms up. It has a very coarse, raw, bitter flavour, yet it tastes like tea. It's almost like a, a bunch of cigarettes 
salt in water. 